Okay, I'm here with Asaf Golani. Golani, is it okay that we air this? It's Golan, yes. Golan, sorry. We're with Asaf Golan. And he is the organizer of this event. He's from Israel. Tell me why you're doing this and why you're here and not in Israel. Well, my father passed away from cancer. So I came over to take over the family company. And the company was here. So my wife and I came. And uh, I was here before. I grew up here. And during uh, Oferet Yitzuka and the other wars, I also organized the other, other Israeli rallies. And in this war, my wife and I, we got together. It was our first rally. She made signs and we called our friends and those friends brought more friends and more friends and this has been the largest uh, turnout we've ever had. Awesome. What, what, would, what would you consider a success from today's event? Just by the fact that Jews show up and counter protest or show the flag and tell the world that Israel is defending itself. Just that is, is a winner. During the second Intifada, I believe it was, or maybe it was uh, the 2005 war, there was a kid, his name's Daniel. It was in Los Angeles and he took one flag and he went and countered protest all by himself. The news just took him. All the Arabs showed up, a thousand of them and only one. And he, and he by himself, he won. So just imagine when all of us are here and showing us our numbers and then before Shabbat, and coming over here, leaving work, I'm running a company and I'm leaving that to come here to organize this. It's a sacrifice, but it's a sacrifice that's just heartening. And we're so happy that so many people showed up to say that Israel has a right to defend itself. You know, you mentioned that you were, you're happy that the Jews are here. I have spoken to quite a few people that are not Jewish and they're here. Tell me what you think of that. It's not only Jews, we have many Christian friends. Even uh, Hindu friends, Indian friends that came here too, and there's some and South Americans and uh, Moroccan, and we have people from all over to say that Islamic terror is a threat in the Middle East. It's not just a threat to Israel; it's a threat to Europe. It's a threat to Syria, to Iraq, to Saudi Arabia, to Iran, the Sunni uh, ISIS. It's a threat to Iran. They're a threat to Egypt. Even Egypt turned against Hamas. There's a reason for this. They know what the Islamic Brotherhood is, and it needs to be stopped. And the president needs to do more to stop Hamas terror. He needs to stop focusing on Israel and stop focusing on stopping money to Hamas, stop money to the UN schools, which use it to hide rockets, to take children and to, be, to teach them to hate Jews to the point that their child combatants. Child combatants are the worst combatants there is in the battlefield. There's two reasons for this. The first one is they have no fear of death. They don't know what death is. The, so they take risks that nobody else would. The other thing is, and I've read a lot about this subject, the 13-year-olds shudder at what the 8-year-olds do. And here's the reason why. A child, the younger he is, the less he understands that the things that he does, he might regret later on. And it's the people who are the most evil in the world are the people that use child warriors, child combatants. And Hamas uses child combatants as scouts. Now this is very, very scary. Scouts, I, uh, I explain that. They send the children out first to locate the Israeli positions. The Israelis are not going to shoot the child. And then the child comes to the, to the fighters and tells them they're over there. And if he gets killed to them, it's a plus. It's, it's a prop for propaganda. And if he survives, he's just going to go to another battlefield. He's going to out the Israeli soldiers where they're at for the uh, ambush to come and kill them. This is what our soldiers are facing over there. This is why it's so dangerous and this is why Israel should not stop and continue to fight until Hamas is gone. Do you, do you really believe Hamas is going to go away? I mean, they have cells all over the world. It's a non-state. It's a terrorist group. The United States almost destroyed Al-Qaeda. They stopped. They started making uh, negotiations with them. They can be defeated. Uh, now, Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah in the Second Lebanon said, yeah, the Second Lebanon War, he said, had the Jews fought one more week, we would have collapsed. One more week. This is what he said. One more week, Israel. <laughs> One more week. One more week. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much. Jessica.